Everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to get the game Persona 3 Reload working on an Apple Silicon Mac. So we're going to be using the Windows version of this game because there is no macOS port, I'm afraid. However, we can run the Windows version using something called Crossover. So today what we're going to do is show you how to get the game running through the Apple Silicon Mac using Crossover. We're going to be pairing a Bluetooth controller. I'm going to show you the work on, on how to get this work. We're going to be fixing some of the screen tearing issues on the screen as well. And we're going to try and get this working as well as possible. Despite the fact that this is a DirectX 12 game, this can work fine on an Apple Silicon Mac using Crossover. So the first thing I'm going to do is to click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you click the link and make a purchase, then I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, we'll be taken to the store page or you can go to codeweavers.com and click on buy now. I do recommend making a purchase of Crossover Plus, which comes with 12 month support. If you want to get a discount, then make sure to use the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New and just apply here and then you're going to get a 20% discount. Discount. And anyway, once already, you can click the buy now button and then you can go ahead and fill out your details. Alternatively, if you want to try this out, you can also go to the Code Weavers website, click the try now button, then you can fill out these details and get a fully featured 14 day free trial. So that's what we're going to do today. Here we're downloading Crossover 23.5, which is the latest at the time of recording. So once Crossover is downloaded, we're going to go to Finder and then we're going to go to our downloads folder. We want to find our Crossover zip file here. So all we need to do is double click. It's going to extract. And then we have the Crossover app here. We're going to drag and drop this and put this into our applications folder. Once that's copied over, we'll click on applications and then we're going to scroll until we find the crossover app. So go ahead and double click. Here it's saying crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Are we sure we want to open? Press open. So once this is open, we've got the option to install applications and games. So the first thing we're going to do is to download Steam. So click on the Steam icon here, we'll do a search for it. Then we're going to click on install Steam. It's going to download and install Steam into a brand new Windows 10 64 bit bottle. Here we're just going to say yes to installing these various fonts. A lot of progress is going to happen in the background you don't have to click anything in particular. So now we're going to go through the Windows Steam setup. So just click next, select your language, select the default installation. Now we're going to allow this to run Steam. So this is downloading a 300 megabyte update. Just let that finish. So now we have the Steam login screen. We can log in with our username and password, or we can scan the QR code with the Steam app on a smartphone. So now we're logging in. And now we're in the Windows version of Steam. And if you want to progress any further, what I'd also advise you to do is to shut down Steam so that we can change some of the graphics settings within Crossover. Basically, we need to quit out of Steam. Press exit here. So now that the Steam bottle has been created, we can just change some settings here. What I advise you to do is to turn on D3D Metal, which is Game Porting Toolkit's translation layer. And then we're going to go ahead and turn on M-Sync, which is a Mac specific alternative to E-Sync. And this is going to help improve performance as well. And once that's ready, we're going to double click on Steam and log in again. So once we're back into Steam, we can go ahead and go to the store and then buy a copy of Persona 3 Reload. So we're just going to type in Persona 3 and then we can get to the actual official store page here. And we're just going to go ahead and buy the Windows version of this game. So for example, this one, and buy this version of the game. So once the purchase has been completed, we can press install content here. I'll just go to library, type in Persona, and then go to Persona 3 Reload and then click install and then install it into its default location or on an external drive. Accept the end user licensing agreement, and then it's gonna start the download process. Just wait for that to finish. It's gonna be 22.5 gigabytes. We'll come back once this is done. So once the game is fully downloaded, we can go ahead and go to our library and then launch the game. So I'm gonna press play here. So uh, just before we do this, I'm just gonna make sure we have a controller attached. And uh, what you can find here is that I have a DualSense controller. If you don't have a DualSense controller already, then make sure to click on the link in the description for my video tutorial. It's gonna go ahead and connect mine up. And if you can't get the controller working in game, you can go ahead and go to properties and then you can get a controller and you can try disabling Steam input that helps for a lot of games. So now I'm gonna press the launch button and we're gonna play. So now you can see the game is launching up. If you want to figure out how to put this frame rate counter on the top right hand side of the screen, then make sure to click on the link in the description for my video tutorial for Metal HUD. Now we're loading into the first cutscene. It's going to skip past this and show you the in-game performance. So one thing to make sure to do is to go to the graphic settings. Really good idea to make sure that reflections are turned off. I'll put this on medium settings here. We're going to put the frame rate limit up to 120 and then leave everything else the same. So save changes here. You also might want to turn on VSync to get rid of any kind of screen tearing. So once that's done, we're going to load up a new game. So anyway, that's how you get Persona 3 working on the Apple Silicon Mac with controller support and without screen tearing and with good performance without the ray trace shadows. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've got lots of other video tutorials like this on my YouTube channel, so please check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.